Welcome to the update about macOS Sonoma 14.3 on all kind of unsupported Macs. So in this video I'd like to talk about three topics. First one, how is macOS Sonoma 14.3 running on all kind of unsupported Mac models ranging from 2011 up until 2017. Second one is what is the best method to update your Mac your unsupported Mac if it's already running Sonoma or Ventura or any other unsupported Mac because, and that's a little sneak peek, I found some issues when you're using a USB drive updating your Mac. And the third one I'd like to clear up a little bit about the confusion with that KDK, with that kernel debug kit that's all about the comments and by the way all about the Discord server that I'm running and it already hit 1000 members. So if you haven't yet, I would really recommend at first you subscribe my channel and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any more updates. And second, join the Discord and start a conversation there. There are a lot of channels about every kind of Mac model, about specific software and as I said, already about 1000 members and growing helping each other and thank you so much for that great community and keeping all our old Macs alive. Let's start with the first topic and that is how is Macro Sonoma 14.3 that was just released two days ago running on all kinds of unsupported Macs. And the good answer is, and by the way, if you like to install an unsupported Mac OS on your old Mac, this one is not a tutorial but here is the ultimate and most easiest tutorial how to install any unsupported macOS on your old Mac. But if you already have an unsupported macOS on your Mac and you'd like to update to 14.3, I can give you a very great thumbs up for your Mac because 12, 13, 15 Mac Pros 2013 and 2012 and the iMac 2017 all Mac models run flawlessly with macOS Sonoma 14.3 except as before the iMac 2011 and all other models that are older than 2012. That's the reason why I don't recommend installing Sonoma or Ventura on Mac models older than 2012 because the map kit requires a metal capable graphics card that's not the case in most of those old iMacs and so for instance with maps you don't see anything in weather the map feature with the precipitation map is not working in photos the map that shows where your photo was taken is not working if you try to capture a screen video it freezes completely so there are a lot of flaws with that old Macs that I don't recommend using such a new Mac OS. If you own a Mac model 2011 and older, I personally recommend Mac OS Big Sur with Open Core Legacy Patcher because with Mac OS Big Sur, for instance, the map kit doesn't require metal and nearly all of the Wi Fi and Bluetooth drivers are still there and are still working. But with all other Macs starting 2012, like that MacBook Pro like the Mac Pro down here, 2012, the cheese grater and all new Macs work more or less flawlessly. There's just one little thing that you might already know. The Mac Pro 2013, the trash can, it just has some problems with the transparency in the maps. So there is like a solid black or solid white background only with the text. So otherwise fine and you can work with that. Second part, and that might be the most interesting part for all of you guys already running unsupported macOS on old Macs, what's the best way to update? I tried the regular update where you just click on the system settings because it pops up, there's a new update, macOS 14.3 and you click update with any, like with any other supported Mac and I tried USB method where I created a USB drive with the installer, booted from here and installed it as an update. What I can say is that all three 
MacBooks, MacBook Pro 2012, two graphic cards, MacBook Air 2013 and MacBook Pro 2015, all three of them, when you use the USB method, had a frozen progress bar about one third during setup, during update. So here in my video, I already described that problem and described and explained the fix for that and that worked with all three of them. You have to reboot, keep the shift key pressed so it reboots in safe mode and then you will see the progress bar goes to one third where it was stuck before and then below the progress bar you see 1%, 3% and so on and it starts continuing the setup and the good thing with the USB method is that the post install root patch is already installed. So you have the graphic acceleration directly installed. There's no need for another root patch. Everything is set up after that one safe mode boot. So don't panic if you are using that method or if that might happen during any other update method on your Mac. But if you just, and that's the conclusion for chapter two, for all other Macs, and same with the MacBooks, if you just hit update in the system settings, let it sit there for like half an hour, it will greet you, maybe without the graphic driver acceleration, the Open Core Legacy patcher will pop up, will say, okay, you booted without root patch, you wanna install the root patch, you click yes, and after another reboot, everything is set up. And the good news is that you don't need another open core legacy patcher version because version 1.3.0 that is just out for about six weeks already works fine and flawlessly on all these Macs for macOS 14.3. And now let's talk about the third part and that is that KDK confusion. So KDK is a kernel debug kit that the open core legacy patcher requires to install and now comes the important part to install AMD graphic drivers. So basically if you don't have a very old Mac and if you don't have any AMD graphic card you don't need a KDK. For instance MacBook Pro 2012, MacBook Air 2013, MacBook Pro 2015, all of them don't need the KDK. And that is when you start the update from system settings, the Open Core Legacy Patcher will check, oh, there's an update incoming. It's just started downloading an update and checks, do I need to download a new KDK? If it is the case, it will download the KDK. If it's not required, it won't. So don't panic if there's no download of a new KDK. And there is a new KDK for 14.3 and you find all links down in the video description. If you want to download that, you can do that. And if you want to play 100% safe, you can download the KDK, install it before you do the update. By the way, the Mac Pros 2012 and 13, so the cheese grater and the trash can, they do need the KDK because the trash can 2013 has AMD graphic cards and all official graphic cards with the cheese grater, most of them are from AMD, they will need the KDK as well. The old iMac 2011 has an AMD graphics card. It needs a KDK. So if you want to play 100% safe, as I said, just download the 14.3 KDK from the link down below and install it before you do the update. Otherwise, as I said, the Open Core Legacy Patcher will pop up and download it if required. Good thing though, if you do the USB method, no KDK is required because the root patches are already in that installer integrated. And so I hope I could explain a little bit what's about the KDKs and if you need it or not. Happy updating 
If you haven't yet, as I said, subscribe to the channel and join the Discord for more questions and answers there and a very nice community helping each other. Stay tuned for the next update and therefore have a good week. See you soon here on my channel. Bye bye.